So this here is um, our little girl Nibbles. She's a white throat rock or rock monitor. Cape monitor, they've got lots of common names. Valrhenus alba ligaris is a scientific name if I've pronounced it correctly. So she's just busy burying some eggs she laid for us. Now she's not the best mom ever. She's actually been stressing me out for about three weeks now. Uh, she started dropping the odd slug which she does every time. This is her third breeding season. Um, we haven't actually seen any activity from the males actually locking to a female properly. So I'm not too sure if we're going to have much good eggs or anything like that. But as long as she gets them all out that's my main concern. And the fact that she is busy burying them and then she goes around and uses her front snout just to push the sand over them and compact where the eggs are laid it's so cute so she's actually starting to become a good mom but yeah as i say a very very stressful time with this girl she she's from the bloodline of the first um rock monitor i ever got which was rocky um, he was a male that i bred and shortly after breeding he got an infection which wiped out his kidneys which was a very very difficult um, loss that I had there so it's again when breeding animals is always that risk you know risk of getting egg bound or males actually passing away from picking up something so there you can see how she's using her little snout very cute just pushing the soil over where the eggs are and like sort of patting it down so we put this um, sort of big divider in here so that she has her little alone space. Got her own little basking site, little hide, and her water bowl. She's been climbing through a lot by the looks of it. We're changing it like twice a day for her. So obviously being very worried about her uh, when she started dropping the eggs. Um, I went to the vet, we got um, calcium shots which we inject and then wait an hour and followed by oxytocin which can help obviously induce labor and it helps the muscles and everything so they can push now we did this three times and uh, we didn't get much from it at all so that's why i've been I've actually been really stressed out by that so the fact that she is actually burying them now is a good sign that she's pretty much finished I've, she has been dropping slugs all over the place. I think I've got about um, about 16, well 10 slugs. You can see here's an old slug. That one's dried up a little bit. She just poops them out all over the place. That's what she normally does every year is just poop out slugs all over the place. The last batch we only had like t uh, three eggs and then pretty much made it full term and then died. So. She doesn't give the best, but I think she's getting better every year. Um, I have so far got some slugs over here. And some which look fertile, but we'll give it time. I candled them and can't see too much, but we'll give it time. So the incubation can take anywhere from four to six months. So with a total of 16 so far, we'll see what she's got left here, but she normally drops around about 30. So we're gonna let her just uh, finish burying them. Those eggs that I've actually got over there fell through that gap over there. I normally have a board that is put in the gap, but uh, we removed that board to check on her yesterday. She's been laying for 24 hours now. So some of them fell through that gap. I just picked them up quickly and put them there. So we're gonna let her do her thing. I feel once she is like buried and covered them up, then we can come and actually see what we left with. But again, I'm just glad that she got it all out. As you can see, she, I mean, she's active, she's tongue flicking. I mean, there was times where I was really worried about her. You can see the condition she's lost in her tail. It's very, very thin. So I actually got um, some fluids into her. I've been injecting her with ringers, which is like uh, pretty much like we get in a drip, but there's some other things added so that it's much better for reptiles. 
and I've been injecting that underneath her skin for a couple of days. I think I've done it about uh, four times. And that's just to give her extra fluids in case there's anything like her kidneys that are going to pack up or something like that. But she is such an amazing monitor. If I had to have lost her, I would have cried like a baby. She really is a real darling. She does a lot of kids parties and things like that. Obviously now that she's all skinny and gravid, we don't use them. So we'll just fatten her up nicely and then she'll be her normal self again. Yeah, she's so cool. So that's little nibbles. So we'll just wait for her to finish bearing and then we'll go and collect her eggs. Alright, so Nibbles is finally finished. We're gonna go and see what she left us. If I can manage just with one hand here. I'm actually wondering if quite a lot of them were pushed through the gap here, but I guess we'll soon find out. Well, okay, so that's a slug. Normally when I dig for eggs, I just do this. Like these are big eggs, so they're easy to feel, but uh, works pretty well if you looking for like little gecko eggs is just uh, slowly digging away like this in your fingertips and you can actually f then feel something you obviously don't want to roll it or anything so there's lots of duds but again that's pretty much what we were expecting i just want them all to be out okay there's another dud another dud there's a nice one There we go. So that's quite a nice egg. Looks kind of like a golf ball size. They can be bigger. Depends on the size of the female and how many eggs she has. That seems like a lot of them have actually fallen through there. The ground here is pretty hard, which is a sign that uh, she didn't dig through there. There we go. There's another dud. I think I'd be better off on the other side. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go the other side there and just get those ones. See if we can just hop over here quickly. All right. Okay, here's another dud that fell across there. So she likes to lay in the corners. There's a nice white one, but Again, we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll just pop it in here. Bring this on this side. All right. Yeah, so with some eggs, it takes a lot of patience. You have to wait a long, long time. Another dud. But, uh, ugh. Yeah, I've, I've been taught quite a lot of patience when it comes to hatching chameleon eggs because I've had panther chameleons and they can take around 10 months so four to six months doesn't seem too bad it goes pretty quickly there we go another nice one so it'll be awesome if we can actually hatch some of these it's been a while since I've Bred them again. We have them indoors here, so I find they actually do a lot better outdoors. Okay, I think that's pretty much all that we've got. Yeah, so it's the um, incubating some eggs, the ones that take the longest is your Parsons chameleon, which takes two years. It's a long time. Okay, yeah, so there you can see. We've got eight there, and then we've got another six in the incubator already. So the, the, what we're using here is vermiculite and perlite mix. I find this is a really nice medium to use. I mean, eggs don't even need to actually be in contact with anything. They can even be raised off the floor as long as they experience a good humidity and temperature they they do very well and a lot of people like to actually incubate eggs like that 
So I'm just going with a fairly dry mix because you don't want it too wet because then it can actually cause the eggs to rot and things underneath and then they will die. So nice fairly dry mix with a lot of humidity in the air and that will be just fine. All right, so. Cool, hope you enjoyed that video. We'll be posting lots more, so please share, subscribe.